We're about to head into game number four and find out what on earth Nyria is going to play. And Muzzy, he's trying to force game number five here, claw back from a 2 0 deficit. I'm going to name some cards Tree of Life, Starfire, Starfall, uh, uh, Oracle. Uh, I mean, like, how many cards naturalize? Like, I'm trying to think of all the cards that we just saw for the first time, all, like, all season. Yeah, it's it's been pretty brutal stuff. But this is this deck, actually, I love to see this deck from Nyria because this has been actually one of the best performers here this season. Yeah, uh, in Muzzy's hands most of the time as well. And guess what? This is the Dragon Warrior deck from Muzzy as well. I don't want to ruin anything for people, but there's a Death Lord in this deck. Yeah, the Death Wing is what you really oh, need. Oh, Death Wing, yeah. yeah. Well, there's also a Gromish and a Nefarian. Look at what's going on right now. We have two nine mana dragons in each player's hand. Hey man, dragons are cool. People like dragons. This is what happens when you get two greedy players, by the way, <laughs> and they keep getting greedier and greedier. It's like, who can who can like out posture the other one? Like, Just out greed the other well, guy. I'm playing Malagos and Soulfires. I'm playing Nefarian and Deathwing. Yeah, you win. Deathwing just trumps it all. <laughs> I love Deathwing. Nothing Wing. trumps Deathwing. Now we're gonna get on the ground a little bit earlier than Muzzy is here. And this is the situation that's kind of scary for this build. If they don't have weapons to take care of this early game stuff, this damage adds up to a lot. But speak of the devil. Yeah. Uh, Death Spite, pretty good card. Do you think that's another card that should maybe be uh, changed up? No, I think I like Death Spite a lot. I think that yeah. card's totally fine. Warsong, just... Warsong Commander is the only thing yeah. that I would negatively impact at the moment. Yeah, I think that's how I would fix it as well. Because uh, you don't want to take away Death Spite from the Control Warrior decks. It's just something they actually just need. Muzzy going to be patient here. Uh, wants this coin to be higher impact. Maybe rolling into turn 7, turn 8, looking forward to, to Nefarian turns. Yeah, it's way more important for him to have the coin for, you know, getting a Gromish out early or Nefarian out early than it is for him to get a Death Spite out here. Because... You know, the likelihood of him dying because of this two damage here is uh, pretty low. Right, that's really where the big story is. You know, how much pressure is Nyria going to apply? When he life taps on turn two and he follows it with the M Gang boss, uh, to me, I feel like he's got a pretty comfortable read here that this isn't a very aggressive build. Yeah, plus, I mean, he just looks like a genius holding onto here because there's so many better targets for him now. Yeah. So we're gonna find it. Well, there's that death wing. <laughs> yeah, buddy. It's always, them muzzy. it's always great when they draw a 10 mana card in a uh, super competitive league. Gosh, just look at him. It's chaos and destruction follows. It, it's a, one of the, the better gold cards animation wise. There's just lava coming flying out of him. <laughs> now, muzzy can pick up an extra card here this turn. Yeah, this is really, uh, this is kind of a tough decision to me. You know, Armor Smith, I think, is fine here. Coining the Acolyte, I think, is fine as well. But he has to find the balance, too. He doesn't want to be drawing too many cards. Yeah, and then what does he attack here? Because if he attacks the Azure Drake, which you got to be scared of leaving that on the board, then now you're gonna get an extra 1-1 one -one out of this as well. But you're willing to trade, you know, two extra cards here for one of these 1-1s. One -ones. Yeah, that's the thing, is I don't think the 1-1s one are really that impactful right now. Um, again, the bigger story is, how much? How many cards can he afford to draw right now? I mean, Nyria could start burning stuff if he wanted to. Yeah, Nyria attacks both the Acolyte of Pains here. You can even do some stuff with Implosion as well and start making Muzzy draw a lot of extra cards here. And that's what he's going to do. I yeah. love this from Nyria. If you burn the right cards out of this deck, they have a hard time winning. It's it's practically a combo deck. Yeah, I mean, this is... this. Uh, you know, Muzzy's got a lot of, I think, the key cards in his hand right now, but... Uh, the yeah, last thing you want to do is see cards get burned. I mean, those are just, you know, in, a, in a matchup like this, these are free for Nyria. Yep, here we go. Here comes the burn. Oh. Roll Taskmaster, not the end of the world. It's an unexciting one. And shield block. Unexciting yeah, not well. the end of the world. I mean, Muzzy could use it with the shield slams, and he is, you know, getting a little aggroed out here, but... He does have some answers here, though. He has a Fiery War Axe and a, and a Revenge if he wants to get aggressive with this board state, because... You know, he's got he's probably figured it out by now that this might be the the, the dragon lock deck. Yeah, the Azure Drake is the is the yeah. giveaway here. And so he's probably figured out exactly what's going on here and knows that his life total is pretty important because at some point in time that Malagos is gonna hit and you're gonna take a ton. Yeah, Revenge also just frankly isn't very good in this matchup. Um, so I, I like adding the Armorsmith here, be able to execute afterwards as well. Again, once if he gets to the late game scenario, look at this hand. Yeah, and this is what I'm about to talk about. Let's talk about what this deck does. You see this Emperor Thorson in Nyria's hand? Super important, because he needs to make Dark Bomb a little bit cheaper, and, you know, cards like Soulfire a little bit cheaper, because there's going to be a turn where he's going to play a Malagos, and then you're going to take 24, or you're going to take 26, because he's going to play two or three spells that are going to have Spell Power plus five, and you're going to just take a million. I mean, this is essentially a combo deck. It plays a lot like Freeze Mage. Yeah, that's, that's really, the, I think, the comparison to draw there. But it has all the benefits of just being able to freely draw cards yeah, instead I mean, of having to invest, you know, all your resources into doing that. Yeah, you're in the Warlock class, so it's a it's a completely different kind 
of control deck, but they can pressure you in other ways as well. Plus, you know, it just looks like handlock a lot of the time as well. If you don't see like an Azure Drake or, you know, some other kind of dragon showing creature right away. So sometimes you get, you know, some, some really good leg up on your competition because they don't know exactly which variant of the deck you are. Yeah. So big game hunter going to be added. Muzzy understands what's happening now. There are not big game hunter targets in this deck. He just yep. wants to get extra pressure on board to see if that can take care of some threats later on. Yeah, and if there is, there might be one. You know, every now and then you might randomly see something like Alex Straza or something, but Muzzy needs threats and has other ways to answer those cards. Plus, he needs to just make the cards in his hands good. He's not going to have time to play this big game hunter later as a tempo card because look at the converted mana cost in his hand right now. Yeah, it's massive. I mean, yeah, he's got eight drops. He's got nine drops. He's got 10 drops. Yep. Hellfire and then Implosion afterwards. Nyria is going to continue to have board state turn after turn, and he handles what Muzzy's throwing at him more importantly. This is going to make the way for this Azure Drake. You know, that doesn't feel like a big deal, but four extra damage here and there, that matters a ton right now. Muzzy's at 16. Yeah, I love seeing Implosion and Control Decks as well, because not only is it a removal spell, but it's a threat as well. And then, you know, he gets to use these as removal or pressure, so it gives you, like, the ultimate flexible card here in this deck. It's just so good in decks like this. Yeah. So now the big question to me is, is this potentially a Grom turn? Okay, so... Like, putting a 10 power threat on board can matter right now. Yeah, I think Muzzy just wants to armor up more than anything, and he, he, getting the Death Spite allows him to do that with, you know, actually progressing his board and getting damage in. So I don't hate this play, but he gets the Grom next turn and activate it. Yeah, so this is going to be an Azure Drake added for Nyria. Ooh, Twilight Drake's a very good pickup, but Defender of Argus is going to make his board a little bit more resilient here. Uh, but now this opens it up for Brawl. Brawl, perfect save here from Muzzy. You know, has didn't use it in a spot where it was weak. Now he can capitalize. This is going to be a pretty good turn for uh, for Muzzy here. He's going to be able to Brawl, use his weapon to clean up whatever's left over, and armor up, and just, if he can ever get initiative back, that's what he needs. He needs to turn, you know, play one of these Gromishes, play a Nefarian, and start to actually grind out here. And by the way, guys, you know, we talked about they're going to play cool, fun decks here tonight. Muzzy has a lot of practice with this deck. Yeah, I mean, this is not a, like a joke build. He's not right. just playing this because he played this when his season was on the line. Yeah, I actually asked him about it later and got the list from him. And I was like, hey, is this deck actually good? And he was like, no, it's very good. <sighs> that is not the one he wanted to see stick around. Yeah, you can see the smile on Iria's face. Uh, you got to always feel good when you uh, win the brawl there. Yeah. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Muzzy actually has to gain armor this turn as well, which obviously he's going to do given his hand context right now. Can't can't leave mana floated. But at the same time, do you want to leave this Azure Drake here? That's really the big point. All right, so what happens if you leave the Azure Drake here? You're going to take four either way, but is the spell power the problem? You know, do you just die to a couple dark bombs? Here's really the problem that I'm looking at now is that rolling into turn 10, he was looking at Nefarian, use the Death Spite, and then execute afterwards. Now that potential is gone. Yeah. He, it's difficult for Muzzy to actually get back initiative in the spot unless he wants to Death Wing. Yeah, and uh, God, this is such a hard spot. Maybe holding onto the Death Spite is actually correct there, but it's so hard in that moment, and maybe it's actually just wrong as well. Yeah, so he's going to use Execute. This anti kill bot will stick around to deal some extra yeah, damage. And... That's going to be a game, right? No, it's only um, 11 damage right now. Oh, it's only 11, okay. Yeah, it's a little well, short. I say only 11. Well, you can just draw Soulfire. You <laughs> could just draw Soulfire. It's not going to happen this turn. Yeah, I got to believe this Blackman Corruptor might just go to face here. I mean, he's got to get a read that Muzzy's hand is just a bunch of, you know, big, expensive things that, you know, where you can only do one thing at a time. Cynic Swamp, who's no help at the moment. And it is pointed upstairs, indeed. Muzzy, he's got the pressure on, but still ways to fight back against this. I mean, now he has the Alex Straws in his hand. This is looking like a turn where you can use this to try to stabilize your life total a bit. Yeah, you could pick off one of these minions here, Alex Straws yourself, and just hope, you know, gain eight life, hope and pray it's going to be good enough here. Uh, it's going to be the most expensive and biggest anti kill bot we've ever seen, but it might just hopefully get the job done for him. How else can he live through this but turn? So Iria has got a pretty good turn after that as well if he Alex Straws us. Yeah. Well, all right, what does Grom do this turn? Because then you get to armor up. If you Grom and armor up, now you're going to be left with a 3-2. Yeah, you go to 9 that you way. You go to so, 9. So you are dying to Malagos if you choose to make that play, but maybe that's the risk he has to take. Again, he's been fighting from behind the entire game. He has to find initiative on board. Here's the thing. If he's been paying a lot of attention, there was an Emperor trigger in this game, right? And we haven't seen even half of the cards out of Nyria's hand that the Emperor triggered for. So you have to believe that it's possible something like 
you know, Balor Ghost is back there. Right. It is possible, but I think this is the turn that Muzzy had to take, or otherwise yep. this game was going to continue to slip further and further into Nyria's control. So yeah, despite the fact that he loses this and he's going to drop the match, you have to take a risk at some point. Yeah, you have to take a risk at some point because otherwise he can't win. I mean, he's playing not to lose here or there, and you just can't let that happen. Are you going to show off a little bit here? Whoa, hang on, slow down. <laughs> I think he's just messing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, we saw Cranch misclick in this same spot, you know, yeah. fireball the face. Nyria's not on his phone, though. <laughs> yeah, that's tr definitely true. Nyria uh, makes work of Muzzy in game number three. Dragon Warlock beats out Dragon Warrior in our fourth and final game here. And again, this one, really all the pressure was off of these guys. Relaxing, have a little bit more fun, show off some, some bigger portions of the range with decks that aren't just the tier one cut and dry, super competitive build. Yeah.